Hi there friends, this is Becca Feekin with Amazing Paper Grace. I'm a licensed designer with Spellbinders Paper Arts and today I'm introducing my new collection, Graceful Borders and the Graceful Frame Maker. These are tools you don't have in your stash yet, so I'm going to explain how they work together. We're going to make a card and I'm going to show you how. So what you're seeing on the left side is Graceful Damask. It is one of seven new border sets. And the cool thing is they're mix and match. So between them, you can switch out elements and make beautiful borders. And then this is the frame maker tool. By cutting four borders, aligning them around the edge, and then cutting, you'll get a perfectly mitered frame, which is wonderful for cards. You can use it for prints you hang. You can also use it for scrapbook pages. I've also included four corner elements, and one of them is a classic photo corner. So let's just see how this works. I went ahead and cut four of the damask borders. And while they were stacked together, I went to my paper cutter and trimmed the edge at the same time. Now here's where the good stuff starts. We're gonna be using the frame maker tool. I normally tape it down to a typewriter weight piece of paper so that I have an anchor to work off of. And then you're gonna take your first border strip, turn it the way you want, and looking along both edges, noticing the tick marks, you're gonna situate it both centered and level. I turn the embossing side down and then I just adjust it and I tape it in place. You're gonna do the same thing with all four border pieces. It's easiest to start out at the bottom and then the top and then add the sides making sure that everything is level and symmetrical. For cutting, just double check your inside and outside corners. They're the most important. Then all you need is one pass through your die cutting machine. After one pass through the machine, remove all of the excess pieces, leaving the four mitered pieces. What I like to do is take a pencil and mark left, right, up, and down so that I can reassemble them just like they came out of the die cutting machine. With a piece of clear tape, I secure each miter and that's all that's needed. We're ready to move on to the next level. So I'm going to show you how to make another layering frame. So the next thing I do for a layering frame is I take a piece of cardstock and I use the frame maker tool and just run it one pass through my die cutting machine. Once cut, you'll get four triangles. What I do is I stack them together, I'll take them to my paper trimmer, and I'll cut off one edge. And voila, right then and there I have another frame. You simply lay them out as they were cut and you can use washi tape or cellophane tape on the back. So here are our layers. Our frilly damask is over top of the other layer we've created. And now I'm going to just stamp a sentiment to go in the aperture. We're almost done here. All I need to do is put some foam tape on my frame just so that I can elevate it a little bit. Once I have that done, I'll put my sentiment in place. And then I've made a little bow to go across the front. So once I've attached that, all I need to do is put some foam tape on the back for a little bit more elevation and then stick it in place and we're all done. So I have two more bonus uses to show you for the frame maker. You won't want to miss that, so stick around just another minute. I don't know about you, but choices are hard for me. We made the frame on the right, but it's just as easy to make the frame on the left. All you have to do is turn your die around. You get both options. Or why not use both? If you like making large cards, all you simply need to do is drop in one of your mitered frames and then caddy corner the other and center it on top. And voila! Now this is a little bit of an advanced technique, but let's just say that you want to make a frame large enough for a scrapbook page 
or you want to make a larger frame. Well, it actually is pretty easy to do. So what you'll need is your cutting plate and the frame maker die. And what you're going to do is you're going to tape the frame maker die to the plate. But you're going to bring it down to the middle of the X so that half of the X is hanging over. And then I typically tape it with a piece of tape at the top and a piece of tape on two sides of the X. What will happen is the die will cut through the tape, but the tape will continue to hold the die to the plate. Now just to keep things from shifting around, I'll take a two inch strip of cardstock that's 12 inches long, and I'm going to tape it in place so that it doesn't shift around. So I'm just going to secure it with tape. I'm going to butt it all the way up to the edge because I want to keep it at 12 inches for my scrapbook page. And then I'll simply run it through the machine as far as I need to to pass the center of the X. And then I'll roll it back and it will miter one edge. And then I'll need to do that with all the other sides of all the pieces of paper I want to miter. And so this is what I've come up with. It's mitered on four corners, 12 inches by 12 inches, perfect for a scrapbook page or for signage. And so last but definitely not least, I thought about you guys. I know you have a ton of dies in your stash that haven't seen the light of day forever. So I wondered how they might work out with the frame maker. And so this is one of my favorites. I cut it to experiment around with, and then I released the paper from the die. I'm going to take it to my paper cutter and slice it in half vertically like so. And so with my frame maker laying face up in front of me, I lay out my slices to see if perhaps this will make an intriguing frame. So I tape them down just like I've shown you before and this is what I come up with. A new frame from dies in my stash. So I'm going to layer this on a card. I'm going to put something underneath for a sentiment and then I'm going to add one more layer. I want to use the frame maker again to make this thin border. I've shown you how to do this before. You simply cut and then you stack your four pieces and you trim off the point. It's going to make a thin border that you simply adhere together and put on your card. The possibilities here are endless. And that brings us to the end. Thanks so much for stopping by, friends. And I'm finishing out by showing you the entire collection. Please be sure to go by www.amazingpapergrace.com to get more information on where the collection is available. And I'll see you soon.